Let's open in prayer. Father, I thank you for another opportunity to be your voice. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Enlighten us. Bring us to new dimensions that the evidence of your hand is on our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. I want to acknowledge again the mother of this ministry, Pastor Alice. Let's thank God for her. And all the leaders and pastors, I thank God for your ministry. Are you ready for the word of God? Amen, amen. amen. I want you to turn with me to the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. It reads Inasema, for he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the coast. Eat and drink. Kula na unye, he says to you. Anakuambia, but his heart wake, is not with you. Na wewe. If you can put that in King James Version, please. For he, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. In other words, the scripture is reading, it's something like if you behave a certain way, you are seeing yourself as what you are. Many people today, family, are dealing, are dealing with identity crisis, a period of uncertainty based upon what they have encountered na yale or what they have done in their lives. Ama vitu mwao. And there are different types of individuals na kuna watu wa ina mbali mbali that we will encounter ambao na wao. that could possibly be part of your circle ambao ni watu ambao ni wako. that would speak things in the sphere of your surroundings ambao mambo mahali ulipo. that could literally make you lose your identity mambo ambao kufanya upoteze kujitambulisha kwako. and today I want to talk about Na leo kunena kuhusu cultivating a kingdom mindset kupalilia akili ya kifalme Cultivating a kingdom mindset. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to look at the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 14 through 17. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In other words, you are recognized and identified by what leads you. 
you are recognized and identified by what leads you. It says, for many as are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. It goes on in verse 15 of Romans chapter 8. Verse 15, please. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. You and I can agree that whatever you're grown up in, whatever atmosphere, whatever culture, you will learn the language of the culture. Luga ya ile mila. Like me. Kama mimi. I was born in America. Nilizaliwa Marikani. I did not ask to be born there. Siku uliza nizaliwe pale. But God placed me there. Lakini mungu akaniweka pale. And I had to learn the culture of my upbringing. Na ilinibidi nijifunze mila ya kwetu. Some of which I did not care for. Mengine ambao siku jali kuhusu. But Growing in a culture, it will mold you to behave a certain way. And even speak a certain way. If any one of us in here were born in Mexico, we would be speaking the language of the Mexico culture. So then it confirms that atmospheres create behaviors. Amen? Amen. Atmospheres is a response to spiritual influences. Good and bad. Atmospheres that is sustained over a period, a long period of time creates climates and climates that is sustained creates strongholds. Um, strongholds ngome, over a certain region ma, kwa eneo fulani, creates culture. Inaunda tamaduni. And culture na tamaduni, is socially transmitted into belief systems. Inapitishwa, inakuwa hali ya tabia. And belief systems na tabia ama jinsi ambavu tunafikiri creates behavior. Inafanya tabia zetu ziwe aina fulani. Amen. Amen. Now, principalities kwa hivo, ngome that we have heard about in the Bible are primarily 
in regions zinapatikana katika maeneo that tries to rule and make people think zinajaribu kutawala na kufanya watu waweze kufikiria in a way that does not glorify god kwa njia ambayo haitukuzi mungu i've learned over my life nimejifunza katika maisha yangu that i don't call atmosphere slums and bad places kwamba siiti maeneo kama vijiji ama sehemu mbaya if there's crime kama kuna vitu ama tabia mbaya katika eneo if there's things going on that's bad kama kuna vitu zinaendelea mbaya i don't call it bad areas sipaiti pale mahali pabaya I acknowledge it as a principality stronghold. Ninatambua kwamba kuna ngome mahali pale. That is controlling the region to make people think a certain way. Ambazo zinatawala pale zinafanya watu wafikirie katika njia fulani. And if that principality is the greatest influence. Na kama ile ngome ndio inaadhiri mahali pale the people will begin to act like what it is calling it to influence by kwa hivyo watu watakuwa na tabia ambazo ile ngome inapitisha mahali pale but god has taught us in the bible lakini mungu anatufunza katika biblia that when the apostles were filled with the holy spirit kwamba wale wanafunzi walipojazwa na roho mtakatifu they went out by twos in certain regions walienda wawili wawili kwa maeneo fulani And the book of Acts would say they would turn the cities upside down. Na kitabu cha matendo kinasema kwamba walibadili miji ikawa tofauti. Because they would take over the principalities in that region. Kwa maana wangeenda wakivunja ngome ambazo zilikuwa zinatawala katika zile maeneo. And they would begin to declare the kingdom of God coming to earth. Na wangetangaza ufalme wa Bwana katika zile maeneo. Amen. Amen. Now listen very carefully. There is a difference of having the kingdom of heaven. Kuna tofauti kati ya kuwa na ufalme wa Mungu and the kingdom of God. Na ufalme wa ufalme wa mbingu na ufalme wa Mungu. There is a difference. Kuna tofauti. The kingdom of heaven ufalme wa wa, wa mbingu is a place. Ni mahali It is the headquarters of our heavenly Father. Ni mahali amba, ni ikulu mahali Mungu anapoishi. But lakini the kingdom of God ufalme wa Mungu is an influence ni hali ya kuadhiri of his character. Ya tabia zake and God has made us his children. Na Mungu ametufanya sisi wanawake he has made us to be like his character ametufanya tuwe na tabia kama yake i'm going to show you something by scripture nitaonyesha kitu katika neno that when jesus came to the earth kwamba yesu alipokuja ulimwenguni there was only one conversation that he used kulikuwa tu na neno moja alitumia and he spoke of na alikuwa ananena kuhusu and that was the kingdom of god na hiyo ilikuwa ufalme wa mungu In Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Matayo 4:23 It declares. Anatangaza. Jesus went up about all Galilee. Yesu akaenda Galilaya kote. Teaching in the synagogues. Akifundisha katika sinagogi. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Akihubiri injili ya ufalme. And healing all manner of sickness and all manners of disease among his people. Akiponya magonjwa yote kati ya watu. Mark chapter 1 verse 14 and 15. Mariko 1:14-15. Now after that John was put into prison. Na baada ya Yohana kuwekwa gerezani. Jesus came unto Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Yesu akaja Galilaya akihubiri injili ya ufalme wa Mungu and saying the na, time is fulfilled na akasema wakati imetimizwa and the kingdom of god is at hand na ufalme wa mungu imekaribia repent ye tubu wewe and believe the gospel na uamini injili remember the Kum, kingdom of heaven kumbuka ufalme wa mbingu is a place ni mahali 
but the kingdom of God is an influence of his character. Luke chapter 8 verse 1. Luke nane moja. Hallelujah. And it came to pass afterwards Na ikaja baadae, that he went throughout every city and village. Kwamba alienda katika kila kijiji na mta preaching and shewing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. John chapter 3 verse 1 through 3. This was a time that there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews. Wa the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, na yeye akaja kwa yesu usiku na akamuambia, Rabbi, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Tunajua wewe ni mwalimu kutoka kwa mungu. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest. Kwa mana hakuna awezae kufanya miujiza hizi ambazo unafanya. Except God be with you. Isipokuwa mungu awe pamoja nae. Jesus answered and said unto him. Yesu akamjibu akamuambia. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Hakika, hakika nina kuambia. Except a man be born again. Isipokuwa mtu wazaliwe mara ya pili. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Hawezi kuwona ufalme wa mungu. The kingdom of God is and what? Influence. The kingdom of heaven is a place. But the kingdom of God is a what? Influence. So Jesus is preaching the kingdom of God. Which is his influence. Ndiye hali yake ya kuwathiri. Jesus was the, the, the representation Yesu alikuwa ndiye muakilishi of God. Wa mungu. And he moved na alienenda as God jinsi ambavyo mungu anavyo, anavyo enenda uli munguni. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, when you are born again Wakati umezaliwa wa mara ya pili you have now switched citizenships umebadili hali ya kitaifa mahali taifa lako and in order to be a citizen of a kingdom na kwa ili uwe uh, mwananchi wa taifa fulani ama ufalme fulani you must learn the culture ni lazima, and the language ni lazima ujifunze tamaduni na na lugha ya ile nchi the Bible says inasema, that when Jesus was taken yesu and Jesus told Peter that he would deny him three times na yesu Petero maratatu, Peter could not hide his language Petero hange ficha lugha yake. because he was around Jesus for three years kwa alikuwa, na yesu kwa miaka and the power of influence of language na tayari alikuwa ameadhiriwa katika hali ya lukunena kwake peter's vocabulary ilikuwa imebadili misamiati ya petero and even though he denied him as jesus said he would na hata ingawa alimkana jinsi ambavyo yesu alisema atafanya his language indicated that he was with him lugha yake ilionyesha kwamba alikuwa ametembea na yesu and when you are a citizen of the kingdom, na kama wewe ni wa ufalme, you must learn the language. Ni lazima ujifunze ile lugha. I have taught people over the, the, the series of years ni watu kwa miaka katha, who have had lost identity ambao hawajitambulishi with their gender. Hawajitambulishi na maneno ambao inafa, Men who thought they were supposed to be women. Watu wanaume walikuwa wanafikiri wanastaili kuwa wanawake. And women who thought they were supposed to be men. Na wanawake ambao walithani walistaili kuwa wanaume. They would say, Pastor. Walikuwa nasema mchungaji. I was born this way. Nilizali wa hivi. I would reply, we'll get born again. 
na ningemjibu uzaliwe mara ya pili because when you are born again kwa sababu kizaliwa mara ya pili everything that you've lost in identity kila kitu ambacho umepoteza katika kutambulika kwako it will come back into alignment itarejeshwa katika maisha yako hallelujah hallelujah glory to god utukufu kwa Mungu somebody say i am an heir mtu aseme mimi ni mrithi of god wa Mungu when you know who you are ukijua wewe ni nani you will walk in the confidence of knowing utatembea kwa ujasiri wa kujua i want to tell you what heirs are ningependa kuambia mrithi ni nani heirs are a person inheriting mrithi ni mtu ambaye anarithi and continuing the legacy na anaendeleza ile familia of their predecessor ile familia ya yule mtu ambaye amemwachia In other words, kwa maneno mengine, when you are an heir, kama wewe ni mrithi, you are inheriting. Umerithi what the what the predator, predecessor. Umerithi ume kutoka kwa mtu has given you. Kuna mtu amekupatia urithi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone say I am an heir of Christ. Mtu aseme mimi ni mrithi wa Kristo. Glory to God. Tukufu kwa Mungu. How you see yourself jinsi unavyojiangalia determines how you approach life itaonyesha jinsi ambavyo unaelekea kimaisha many times mara nyingi we as the children of god sisi kama wana wa mungu do not see ourselves as royal hatujioni kama wa kifalme because we have gotten this misperception kwa sababu tuko na kutojielewa that royalty implies kwamba ukikuwa wa kifalme inamaanisha i must have lots of physical things kwamba ni lazima niwe na vitu mbalimbali ambazo ninaziita vyangu but being royal in the kingdom of god lakini ukuwa wa kifalme katika ufalme wa mungu is not about things sio kuhusu mali it's about position ni kuhusu mahali unaposimama You are royal first beginning in the spirit realm. Kwanza kabisa wewe ni wa kifalme katika hali ya kiroho. And nobody can take it from you. Na hakuna mtu yeyote anaweza kuchukua ile kutoka kwako. Despite conditions you may see. Hata kama mambo yanakusonga. Jesus was God himself wrapped in the flesh. Yesu alikuwa Mungu ndani ya mwili ya mwanadamu. Willing to come to the earth akakubali kuja ulimwenguni to be an ordinary individual ili awe mtu wa kawaida yet he was extraordinary because he was god lakini alikuwa si wa kawaida kwa sababu alikuwa mungu and the reason why pharisees and sadducees na sababu ya wafarisayo na wasadukayo did not receive him as the messiah hawakumpokea kama masihi because they thought he should look different ni kwa sababu walidhani anastahili kuwa tofauti they thought he should have epods on like they had walifikiria pengine anastahili kuwa jinsi ambavyo walikuwa and breastplates with the 12 stones of of the of the israel wawe na vifaa ambavyo wafarisayo walikuwa navaa zile uh, ma, ma, maadini kumi na mawili and these big hats that they wore na zile kofia kubwa walizokuwa wanavaa but jesus didn't come here to start a religion lakini yesu hakuja kuanzisha dini He came to raise a revolution and make a kingdom come forth out of the earth. Alikuja kuleta utofauti na kufanya ufalme uje ulimwenguni. Because he preached the kingdom of God. Kwa sababu alihubiri ufalme wa Mungu. And the kingdom of God is what his influence. Na tumesema ufalme wa Mungu inaadhiri watu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Je, bado mko pamoja nami? Are you ready to go deeper? Mko tayari kuenda ndani zaidi? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to talk about the characteristics of Jesus and the king. Ningependa kuzungumzia kuhusu tabia ama hali ya mfalme. Number one, the kings, kings are legal owners of property and territory. Na ya kwanza ni kwamba mfalme ndiye anakuwa mwenye mali na mwenye maeneo. Number two, ya pili, 
kings rule wafalme wanatawala or command whatever is in their territory na wanatangaza kila kitu ambacho kiko katika eneo yao hao ndio wako na mamlaka number 3 ya tatu kings have absolute authority wafalme wako na nguvu zote and control over their property na wanatawala utawala katika mali yao number 4 ya nne kings can give their property to who who in whoever they want wafalme wanaweza peana mali yao kwa yeyote wanataka because they have authority kwa sababu wako na mamlaka our bible reminds us biblia inatukumbusha in the book of revelation katika kitabu cha ufunuo chapter 1 verse 6 mlango wa kwanza mstari wa 6 that he has given us to be kings and priests kwamba ametufanya kuwa wafalme na makuhani to rule ili tutawale in the earth katika ulimwengu my bible tells me that satan is just a prince of the air biblia inasema kwamba shetani ni mfalme tu wa hapa ulimwengu katika and, hewa and i'm reminded that no prince can overrule a king na ninakumbushwa kwamba hakuna um, hakuna yule shetani hawezi kutawala dhidi ya mfalme God has given you the authority by giving you a piece of him the Holy Spirit. Mungu amekupatia nguvu kwa kukupatia sehemu yake ambaye ni Roho Mtakatifu. That identifies you. Ambaye anakutambulisha. Authenticates you. Anakufanya uwe and, kamilifu. And validates you. Na anakufanya uwe unajulikana. That you are royal. Kwamba wewe ni wa kifalme. Because God does not put himself in something that's not royal. Kwa sababu Mungu hawezi kuishi ndani ya mtu ambaye si wa kifalme. And God does not dwell in losers. Na Mungu hawezi kuishi ndani ya wale ambao wameshindwa. Someone say I'm a winner. Mtu sema mimi ni mshindi. Come on say it like you mean it. I'm a winner. Mimi ni mshindi. If God chose you you are a winner. Kama Mungu alikuchagua basi wewe ni mshindi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. 99% Asilimia 99% of Jesus ministry. Ya huduma ya Yesu Kristo on the earth. Ulimwenguni he did alifanya with words. Na maneno a king uses words mfalme hutumia maneno he does not use physical movements hatumii nguvu za binafsi because the king knows kwa sababu mfalme anajua that he has authority ako na mamlaka and if he chooses to sit on his throne na akiamua kukalia kiti chake cha enzi he can still rule in that seat bado anatawala kutoka kwenye ile kiti The Bible declares that God has put us and seated us in heavenly places. Biblia inasema kwamba Mungu ametuketisha katika eneo za mbingu. That we're not called to fight a physical fight. Kwamba hatujaitwa tupigane zile vita za damu na nyama. That's why Jesus told Satan. Yesu akamwambia shetani. When he was trying to tempt him. Alipokuwa akijaribu kumjaribu. And Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Mataya Matayo 4 mstari wa 4. That man should not live by bread alone. Kwamba binadamu hataishi kwa mkate peke yake. But every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Laki, God. Lakini lakini kwa maneno ambayo yanatoka kwa kinywa cha Mungu. Jesus is trying to teach us simple instructions of the kingdom. Yesu anajaribu kutufundisha mambo fulani kuhusu ufalme. That the words you use. Kwamba maneno utumiayo that the language you choose. Lugha unayochagua will determine itahakikisha your authority kwamba uko na mamlaka or your defeat. Ama umeshindwa. Jesus never allowed anything. Yesu hakukubalisha chochote or anybody. Ama mtu yeyote to change his words. Abadilishe matamshi yake. Because Jesus was aware. Kwa sababu alikuwa anajua that whatever he spoke. Kwamba aliponena he wanted something to happen. Alitaka jambo lifanyike. And whenever you speak. Na kila unapozungumza you should want to see Unastahili kutaka something happen. Jambo lifanyike. Amen. Amen. 
Many of us wengi wetu have had tendencies tumekuwa na tabia of repeating ya kurudia what has been in our atmosphere yale ambayo tumekuwa tukisikia katika maeneo yetu some of you have picked up words wengine tumechukua maneno that you would have never picked up ambazo pengine haungekuwa umechukua if you were not in a atmosphere kama haungelelewa mahali ama ungeishi mahali unaishi spoke that language mahali ambapo hilo neno lilinenwa so when you cuss kwa sababu kwa hivyo unapolaani and say words that's not in line with god na ukizungumza maneno ambayo si lugha ya Mungu it indicates inaonyesha you have been in atmospheres umekuwa katika maeneo that have taught you ambazo zimekufunza what to say yale utasema when you are frustrated wakati umekasirika does anybody speak those words je kuna mtu ananena maneno yale don't raise your hand usi inue mikono i know you're here ninajua uko hapa When anyone is frustrated wakati mtu amekasirika and they're angry na wamekasirishwa sana I taught my sons years ago nilifundisha wanangu miaka zija zilizopita ukikasirika and you begin to shout and cuss na unaanza kupiga kelele na kulaani you have lost your authority umepoteza mamlaka yako because that's exactly kwa sababu hivyo ndivyo what the devil wants you to do shetani angependa ufanye you are being controlled anakutawala by the principalities that will influence you mangome zilizo pale zimeanza kukutawala and when you speak out of order na hapo wakati unazungumza kinyume na jinsi inavyotakikana you are not speaking by the kingdom of god hauzungumzi kama vile watu wa ufalme wanazungumza given over your authority na umepeana mamlaka yako you are telling that region Unapa, unasema uh, kwa eneo lile or the atmosphere ama eneo mahali huko that i don't have power kwamba sina nguvu mimi so i've learned kwa hivyo nimejifunza when i read the gospels about jesus nikisoma injili kuhusu yesu that Jesus would never respond the way they wanted him to. Kwamba Yesu hangejibu jinsi walivyotaka. That he would continually speak based upon the authority that he carried. Aliendelea kuzungumza kulingana na mamlaka aliyoibeba. And God wants to teach you today. Na Mungu angependa kukufunza leo. How to detox. Jinsi ambavyo unaweza kutoa ile sumu ndani yako. Things that does not reveal. Ile sumu ambayo haionyeshi the kingdom of god in you ufalme wa mungu ndani yako the kingdom of god is what it is an ufalme wa mungu ni nini influence say that with me. the kingdom of god is an influence the influence of what his character ni ile anakuadhiri ama anakufanya unabadilika kulingana na tabia zake And in today i in the name of jesus na leo katika jina la yesu the holy spirit told me to come and teach Roho Bwana aliniambia nikuje niwafunze what we should do kile ambacho tunastahili kufanya when we are dealing with different languages wakati ambao tunakabiliana na lugha mbalimbali that does not edify or glorify ambazo hazitukuzi the kingdom of heaven ufalme wa mbingu amen amen Where does small thinking come from? Je, kufikiria kwa hali ndogo inatokea wapi? Number one, Jambo la kwanza. Small thinking comes from cultural context. Kufikiria katika hali duni inatokana na tamaduni zetu. Where you are. Mahali unakoishi. It comes from small context, cultural context. Inatokana na tamaduni ya mahali ulipo. Number two, Ya pili, small thinking comes possibly kufikiria nduni parental influence inatokana na jinsi ambavyo tulilelewa na wazazi wetu or people that you have admired ama wale ambao tumekuwa tukiwaangalia na tunatamani kuwa kama wao number 3 ya tatu small thinking or petty thinking comes from limited exposure kufikiria duni kunatokana na kuto uh, kutoenda kwingi ama eneo mbalimbali na kujifunza mambo mengi sometimes we find ourselves in places kuna wakati tunajikuta katika maeneo that we have not 
been able to come out of because we have not pushed open the door. When I decided to leave my surroundings, I had to push open the door. And what I meant by that, I chose not to stay in associations that I was in. Because I realized that the associations that I was in was keeping me stagnated. And I was tired of being in cycles. Have you ever found yourself in cycles? It's like being on a merry-go-round and not seeing any advancement. When you carry the Holy Spirit in you, there's only a, a time period that you will come to yourself and say, wait a minute. There's more in me than this. What must I do to change momentums? So how do I detox from small thinking? How do I detox from being on cycles and merry-go-rounds? Number one, return to the original way where you were created. Rudi mahali pale pa asli mahali ulipoumbwa. Number two, ya pili, being in sync with God's word. Uwe mantendo yako ya naambatana na neno la mungu. And then number three, ya tatu, change your words to elevate your life. Badilisha lugha yako ili uweze kuinua kufikiria kwako. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Mithali 18 moja. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. Do you have the message Bible? Mithali 18 moja. Hallelujah. Words kill. Maneno yanaua. Words give life. Na maneno yanaleta uhai. They are either poison yanaweza yakawa sumu or fruit. Ama matunda. Turn to your neighbor and say you choose. Wewe chagua. If you are the king if you are part of the kingdom of heaven. Kama wewe ni mmoja wa ufalme wa Mungu. Which you are when you receive Jesus. Ambao ndio mahali huko ulipopokea Kristo. It is our place and headquarters. Ni mahali na ni ikulu which Jesus allowed us to go behind the veil. Mahali ambapo Yesu alituruhusu tuende zaidi ya pazia to be seated in heavenly places. Ili tuweze kukaa katika eneo ya 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 bingu. You must learn the language. Basi ni lazima tujifunze lugha. Because that's what Satan is afraid of. Kwa sababu hiyo ndio shetani anaogopa. He is afraid of you knowing the language. Anaogopa usije ukajua ile lugha. And then he's afraid of you believing in the language. Na anaogopa usije ukaamini ile lugha. Because there are people in the Bible that try to mimic the language. But Satan knew who they were. There's something in the book of the Bible and book and, and the, the book of Acts. When Paul was doing marvelous movements and he was doing miracles. He even gave his handkerchief and they were doing things with the handkerchief that moved in miracle signs and wonders. Because the Holy Spirit gave him the lead to lead the handkerchief and people were being healed by it. And the Bible says the sons of Sceva saw what he was doing and try to mimic him by using the language that he used. 
and when they spoke to this demonic influence that was on this person the demonic influence in this person this demon said Jesus I know and Paul I know but who are you because even though you speak the language it is not in your heart and it is not in your mind and out of the abundance abundance of the heart the mouth will eventually speak the truth so the word of God cannot only go in your mouth it must come in your heart where you believe God having a culture mindset is saying I believe God and I am his child the Bible reminds us in Romans chapter 8 verse 29 for whom he did foreknow he also predestinated them to be conformed to the image of his son that they might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now the message Bible, I like this. It says, God knew what he was doing from the very beginning. He decided from the outset to shape the lives of those who love him along the same lines as the life of his son. The son stands first. Mwana anastanda anasimama kwanza in the line of humanity he restored katikati ya watu ambao aliwarejesha we see the the original and intent tunaona kutoka mwanzo alikuwa amekusudia intended shape of our lives there in him jinsi ambavyo alikusudia kuunda maisha yetu ndani yake so whenever the devil sees you kwa hivyo kila shetani anapokuona there should be some type of manifestation lazima kuwe na jambo fulani linafanyika ndani yako that you are of christ kwamba wewe ni wa kristo that you are his body kwamba wewe ni mwili wa kristo and you dwell among the earth na unaishi ulimwenguni somebody say i am his body mtu sema mimi ni mwili wake. Say it again I am his body. Mimi ni mwili wake. You represent him. Unawakilisha Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number 2, yep. number number 3. Ya tatu. Change your words to evel- elevate your thoughts. Badilisha uh, maneno yako ama lugha yako ili kufikiria kwako kuinuliwe. Say that with me. Change my words Badilisha lugha yako to elevate my thoughts ili kufikiria kwako kuinuliwe haleluya this is very important what i'm about to say hii ni muhimu sana ambao ninaenda kusema i did a study on martin luther king jr nilisoma jambo kuhusu mfalme martin luther something that he said that really stuck to my heart jambo ambalo alisema likakaa moyoni mwangu Have you ever heard of Martin Luther King Jr.? Je, umewahi kusikia kuhusu Martin Luther King Jr.? Yes, amen. He said this. Alisema hivi, it does not matter what people call you. Haijalishi watu watakutambulisha vipi. But it matters what you answer to. Lakini inajalisha wewe utakaa vipi wanapokuita hivyo. If you respond to things that's not in line with your citizenship kama utajibu uh, kuhusu vitu ambavyo havilingani na ufalme mahali uko you are dealing with identity crisis basi utakuwa na haujitambulishi kwa njia inayopaswa if someone calls you out of your name mtu akikuita na jina lisilo lako you do not have to respond hautajibu 
because they didn't call you kwa by sababu hawakukuita kwa majina amen amen so the less you respond kwa hivyo kama hautajibu the more power you have basi utakuwa na nguvu jesus never responded yesu hakujibu to those who did not care for him kwa wale ambao hawakumjali he would always respond based upon the kingdom of god alijibu tu kulingana na ufalme wa mungu which was the kingdom of influence ambayo ilikuwa ni ufalme ya kuadhiri it was god's character ilikuwa ni tabia za mungu he was moving in alikuwa anaenenda kwalo hallelujah hallelujah so where you sit kwa hivyo mahali unapokaa determines what you see ina ita, itathibitisha yale utakayoona and what you see na kile ambacho unaona determines what you do itathibitisha ni nini utakayofanya if you see right ukiona vyema you can submit right basi utaweza kunyenyekea vyema if you submit right ukinyenyekea pale vyema you can serve right basi utatumika vyema if you serve right ukitumika vyema you can sow right utapanda vyema if you see right ukiona vyema you can serve right utatumika vyema if you serve right ukitumika vyema you can now submit right utanyenyekea vyema and if you submit right na ukinyenyekea vyema now you can sow right basi utapanda mbegu vyema when you see ukiona who he is kwamba yeye ni nani to you kwako now you see sasa utaona that i am royal kwamba mimi ni wa kifalme i would not let my conditions sitaachilia vitu ambazo ziko around my position ziingie katika nafasi yangu i am royal mimi ni wa kifalme jesus didn't have on royal apparel Yesu hakuwa amevalia mavazi ya kifalme. Lakini alijua yeye ni nani? Ask your neighbor do you know who you are? Uliza jirani yako je unajua wewe ni nani? Tell them I am royal. Mwambie mimi ni wa kifalme. You are royal. Wewe ni wa kifalme. Enough with what the system says you have to have to be considered successful. Haijalishi watu watasema nini kuhusu wewe ile ambayo unastahili kuwa nayo ndio isemekane wewe ni mshindi. There are people kuna watu that I'm very familiar with ambao ninawajua that have many things. Wako na mali nyingi sana. Cars and houses. Wako na magari na majumba and land. Na na ardhi. But they are empty lakini ndani yao wako tupu because they have not received Jesus kwa sababu hawajampokea Yesu and all these things na hivi vitu vyote that they have gathered ambavyo wako navyo when it is time for them to leave this realm this earth ikifika wakati wa wao kuondoka ulimwenguni they cannot take it with them hawatabeba chochote that's why Jesus says seek ye first and your man Yesu akasema tafuteni kwanza the kingdom of god ufalme wa Mungu and his righteousness na utakatifu wake and all these things na mambo haya mengine yote shall be added unto you mtaongezewa what is the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is the is god influence ufalme wa mungu ni mungu anaadhimi katika tabia zake so what jesus is saying kwa hivyo yesu anavyosema seek ye first mtafuteni kwanza the kingdom's influence kuadhiri kule kunapatikana katika ufalme character uh, tabia za Mungu and when you get his character na ukipata ile tabia ya Mungu all these things haya mengine yote shall be given unto you mtaongezewa God is waiting for his children. Mungu anangojea wana wake. To move in his character. Waweza kutembea katika tabia zake. What is his character? Tabia yake ni nini? Love. Upendo. Someone say love. Mtu sema upendo. Authority. Mamlaka. 
Love authority. Upendo mamlaka. What else? Kitu kingine gani? Love authority. Upendo mamlaka and power. Na nguvu. Which is dominion. Ambayo ni kutawala. You know who you are. Unajua wewe ni nani? The devil can't touch this. Shetani hata kugusa. He can try this but he can't touch this. Hawezi kutugusa. The only way he can touch this is if I allow him to. Ni kama nitamkubalisha. Jesus said, Yesu akasema, the thief come that Satan comes but to steal, kill and destroy. Shetani huja kuiba, kuharibu na kuua. In John chapter 10 verse 10. Katika Yohana 10:10. But I come lakini mimi nimekuja ili mkaweze kupata uzima na mpate uzima tele tele Now listen to me Nisikize sasa This is very very important Hii ni muhimu sana Very important listen to Muhimu this. sana It's found in the book of Mark Patikana katika kitabu cha Marko The book of Mark chapter 16 Mariko 16 Hallelujah Hallelujah Come on Holy Spirit The book of Mark chapter 16. Mariko 16. Mark chapter 27. Mstari wa King James version please. Mstari wa 27. The book of Mark chapter 16. Mariko 16. Chapter 27. I'm getting a download bishop. Getting a download. Mianza kupata nikipatiwa. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16 Mariko 16 Chapter 27 Mstari wa 27 Amen Someone have a Bible Mtu ana ako na Biblia Give me a Bible Mtu nipe Biblia Amen I'll bless you for this Amen I'm going to start with verse 15. Kuanzia 15. And he said to them, Na akawaambia, Go into all the world, Enendeni ulimwenguni mote, and preach the good news to all creation. Mkaihubiri injili kwa kila kiumbe. And whoever believes, Aaminie, and is baptized will be saved. Na kubatizwa ataokoka. But whoever does not believe Asiyamini, will be condemned. Atahukumiwa. These signs will accompany na ishara hizi zitawafuata those who believe. Na hao wana, wa, wa, wa In my name they will drive out demons. Kwa jina langu watatoa pepo. They will speak in new tongues. Watasema kwa lugha mpya. Someone say they will speak in new tongues. Mtu sema watanena kwa lugha mpya. One more time they will speak in new tongues. Watasema kwa lugha mpya. Many times family. Mara nyingi jamii. We only perceive that that's the speaking in tongues. Tunafikiria kwamba kunena kwa lugha. But what Jesus was also saying. Lakini kile ambacho Yesu alikuwa anasema pia. They would begin to speak kingdom language. Kwamba wataanza kunena lugha ya bingu. It would not to speak a spiritual tongue. Haitakuwa tu ya kiroho lakini watazungumza lugha ya kifalme watazungumza na lugha mpya not with old language sio tu na lugha ya zamani lakini lugha ya ufalme amen 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 hallelujah grow by satawaki hallelujah thank you jesus asante yesu hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. I have one more thing I want to share with you and I would take my seat. Kuna jambo moja ningependa kushiriki nanyi kisha nitaketi. Glory to God. Tukufu kwa Mungu. Thank you Father. Asante Baba. The kingdom ufalme and the citizenship na ile kuwa mtu wa kifalme must reflect 
lazima ionekane the character of its king lazima ionyeshe tabia za mfalme it must reflect lazima ionyeshe with bishop pamoja na askofu and pastor alice has been doing askofu pamoja na pastor alice yale wamekuwa kifanya is reflecting the kingdom inaonyesha ufalme ufalme wa mungu in this atmosphere katika eneo hii You're not here just to listen to a preached word. Auko tu hapa kusikiza neno linalohubiriwa. You're here to listen to the kingdom's language. Uko hapa ukaweze kusikia lugha ya ufalme. And that you can come to the realization. Na kwamba utaweza kuja kutambua that what you put in you. Ya kwamba kile ambacho umeweka ndani yako must come out of you. Lazima itoke ndani yako. If this is a water bottle. Kama ini chupa cha maji. And it is. Na ni chupa cha maji. Because water is in it. Kwa sababu maji iko ndani. Without the water being in the bottle. Bila ya maji kuwa hapa ndani. This would be known as a Hiki kitaitwa tu chupa. If it is containing water. Kama iko na maji. If I press it. Nikiifinya That that's in it. Kile ambacho kiko ndani yake will come out of n- it. Ndicho kitatoka ndani yake. So the more it's pressure. Kwa hivyo nikifinya zaidi what's in it kile ambacho kiko ndani will come out of it. Ndicho kitatoka ndani. If you are carrying the Holy Spirit. Kama unabeba Roho Mtakatifu and you feel pressure on every side. Na unasikia umekumwa kwa kila What's pande. In you kile kiko ndani yako will come out of you. Ndicho kitatoka ndani yako. If you are not carrying the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Kama haujabeba kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. What's in you? Kile kiko ndani yako ndicho kitatoka. What is coming out of you? Jeni nini kinatoka ndani yako? What are you saying when you feel pressure? Ni nini huwa unasema wakati umesukumwa sana? Because if you are a God container. Kwa sababu kama umembeba Mungu. Yours and my responsibility. Chaguo lako na wajibu wangu is to be like Jesus. Ni tuwe kama Yesu. When Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. Yesu alipokuwa pale katika shamba la Gethsemane. And he knew he had to go through great persecution. Na alijua atapitia mateso mengi. It was not because of the persecution he was concerned. Haikuwa tu hakuwa amejalishwa sana na kuteswa. Jesus was concerned because Alikuwa amejalishwa because he understood something kwa sababu alielewa kitu that he has never experienced before kwamba hajawahi ile hajawahi kupitia tena that was about to happen ambacho kilikuwa kiko karibu kufanyika and that was na ilikuwa being separated from the father kutengwa na baba because when he took the sins of the world upon him kwa sababu alipobemba dhambi za ulimwengu the father had to separate himself from the sin baba ilimbidi atengane na ile dhambi it was not that he was worried about dying because he knew he would resurrect hakuwa naogopa kufa kwa sababu alijua atafufuka it was him never experiencing ni kwa sababu hakuwa amewahi kupitia separation from the father kutengwa na baba because he was taking on the sins of the world. Kwa sababu alikuwa anajichukulia dhambi zote za ulimwengu. And he said, Lord, if it be. Na akasema, Mungu kama ingewezekana. Could you pass this cup? Unaweza kupitisha hiki kikombe. But as he was being squeezed. Lakini alipokuwa anafinywa. He said, nevertheless. Akasema hata ingawa hivyo. Not my will. Sio mapenzi yangu. But thy will be done. Lakini mapenzi yako itimie. And when you feel pressure on every side. Na wakati umesukumwa kwa kile pande. You give God praise and say God nevertheless whatever you're doing. Unamwambia Mungu hata ingawa ninapitia haya. Not my will but thy will be done. Wacha mapenzi yako yatimize. I know. Najua that you have the power. Kwamba una nguvu to deliver me. Kunikomboa. To sustain me. Kuniweka 
to deliver me. Kunikomboa. And I thank you. Nani nakushukuru. That Satan will not have the last word over anything. Kwamba shetani hatakuwa na neno la mwisho kuhusu maisha yangu. That's what God containers do. Ivo ndivyo vile watu wanaobeba Mungu wanafanya, wakifinywa the indignation of the holy ghost kile cha roho mtakatifu ndani yao will rise up bishop itainuka when paul and silas wakati paulo amenyamazishwa was whipped and put in jail akatandikwa na kawekwa gerezani and had handcuffs on them na wakafungwa mikono the bible says that they begin to worship Biblia inasema walianza kuabudu. What was in them? Kwa sababu kile kilikuwa ndani yao was coming out of them. Ndio kilikuwa kinatokea sasa. And the Bible says. Na Biblia inasema that as they worship walipoabudu at midnight. Wa usiku wa manane. An earthquake came. Kukawa na mtetemeko wa ardhi. I'm telling you when you begin to worship God beyond your circumstances. Ukianza kumwabudu Mungu hata wakati unapitia magumu and you begin to worship him despite the conditions the holy ghost will come out of every area in your life as well as the atmosphere roho mtakatifu atatokea katika kila hali ya maisha yako and to take over spheres and atmospheres na ataanza kuchukua ile eneo and god will reign and remove everything that's causing things that's hindering you Na Mungu atatawala na aondoe kila jambo ambalo limekusukuma Do you believe that today Je unaamini leo Tell your neighbor ask your neighbor what's in you Uliza jirani ni nini iko ndani yako The less you have of the Holy Ghost Kama uko na Roho Mtakatifu kwa kiwango kidogo The less will come out na ndio vile itatokea kidogo kitatokea. There's a difference of being sealed. Kuna tofauti kati ya kujazwa and sealed. Na kuwekwa muhuri. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Kwa Efeso 1:13. Can I have a couple more minutes, Bishop? I feel a push in the spirit. Ningechukua nafasi kidogo askofu. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Kwa Efeso 1:13. Efeso 1:13 Amen. I may need another Bible. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Thank you son. Amen. That's all right. It's okay to let the Holy Spirit have his way, right? Amen. It says this here. Verse 13. In whom ye also trust. Nanyi pia katika huyo. After that he heard the word of truth. Mumekwisha kusikia neno la ukweli. The gospel of your salvation. Habari njema za wokovu wenu. In whom after and in whom also after that ye believed. Tena mumekwisha kumwamini yeye. Ye were sealed. Na kutiwa muhuri with the holy spirit of promise. Na roho yule wa ahadi aliye mtakatifu. So in other words what it's saying. Kwa hivyo inasema hivi kwa maneno mengine. When you receive Jesus Christ. Ukipokea Yesu Kristo, you are sealed. Unawekwa muhuri. But it does not mean that you feel. Haimaanishi kwamba umejazwa. That's why the Bible talks about in the book of Acts chapter 4. Ndio maana Biblia inasema katika matendo 4 After Peter and James was threatened by King Herod. Wakati Petero na Yakobo walikuwa wametiwa hofu. And they came among the other apostles. Wakaja pamoja na wamitume wengine. They prayed and said, "Lord, give us the spirit of boldness by the Holy Ghost." Wakaomba wakasema Mungu tupatie roho wa ujasiri katika Roho Mtakatifu. And the Bible says the house was shaken and everyone was filled. Na Biblia inasema kwamba kile mahali walipokuwa wana wanaombea kukatikiswa. So when you ask for an infilling of the Holy Spirit. Kwa hivyo ukiuliza kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu, boldness will come out of your mouth. Ujasiri utapata. You will lay hands on the sick. 
And you will not tolerate people saying something that you do not believe. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, there is a manifestation that something's in you of God. And I declare and decree today that you will not just accept being sealed but you will desire to be filled because the more you have in, in God and the more pressure you feel the more will come to show forth that God is in you. Because you are called to live from the inside out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you live from the outside in, you are allowing the circumstances and the things that you're seeing now to make you respond to it. But, but when you live from the inside out, you know that what you see now is only temporal. And those things that are not yet seen are called eternal. In other words, what God has placed for you to walk into. You know that it will inevitably come to you. Someone say it's on the way. I'm saying it because every time I taste the word of God and read it I have a tendency of saying David said in Psalms oh taste and see that the Lord is good. He has an ending before you begin. And we must keep the end in mind. Can I tell you one more thing and I'm done? Hallelujah. We are living in two spheres. First, we came out of eternity. Because the Bible says before we were formed, God knew us. Which meant that we were in eternity with God. So we came from eternity into this rim of time. And now we are living in the window of time that we've been called to live by the standards and the ways of the kingdom of God. And we have been given authority in God to add value to the earth by releasing the kingdom of God's character. So I declare to you that you will not settle with just your normal language. But you will begin to come within yourself and say, I want more of God. I want to say this to you. I remember years ago, I went to God. And I prayed to God. I said, Lord, I, I want to repent for the things I've declared and said. And this was it. My prayer was more about being bigger and not being better 
and God wants his children to desire to be better na Mungu anataka wana wake wawe bora than wanting to be bigger kuliko kupanuliwa because the system says you should have a big situation a big a big blessing kwa sababu mahali tunaishi inajulikana kwamba ni lazima be, uwe na vitu vingi lazima kuwe na ku, kuonyeshwa kwingi but i said god lakini nikamwambia mungu i want more better in me ningependa niwe bora zaidi a better representation for you niwe mwakilishi bora kwako i want to be a better son for you ningependa niwe mwana bora kwako And I taught my spiritual sons and daughters start praying to be bigger. Na nikafunza wana wangu wa kiroho anza kuomba kuwa bora ndani ya Yesu. Pray to be better. Omba kwamba utakuwa bora. Because that's what God desires from you and I. Kwa sababu hivyo ndivyo vile Mungu anatamani kutuhusu. Not the prayer to be bigger. Sio ombi la kupanuliwa but to be better. Lakini kuwa bora a better representation mwakilishi bora a better child of god mtoto bora stop letting other people determine wacha watu wasikue ndio watakutambulisha what success is waweze kukuambia kufanikiwa ni nini it is not how many things you have Aijalishi sio kuhusu mali ulionayo. It is moving in the fullness of your purpose that's given to you. Ni kuweza kuenenda katika makusudi yako. A career is what you're paid for. Ikile ambacho umekuwa kama masomo yako ni ile umelipia. But a calling is what you're made for. Lakini wito ni ile uliumbwa uwe. When you begin to understand that. Ukianza kuelewa hayo You will no longer compare yourself with another. Hautajilinganisha na mwingine yeyote. You are blessed already. Wewe umebarikiwa. I said you are blessed already. Tayari umebarikiwa. You are blessed already. Wewe tayari umebarikiwa. Don't let your circumstances dictate your blessings. Usikubali hali yako iweze kuweka duni baraka zako. You are the bride of Christ. Wewe ni biarusi wa Yesu. There is things stored up in heaven that no man can take from you. Kuna vitu ambavyo umewekewa mbinguni hakuna mtu atakaye kunyang'anya. Ni vitu za umilele. Someone say I am blessed. Mtu sema nimebarikiwa. Say it again I am blessed. Nimebarikiwa. Have you ever seen and I'm leaving. Je, umewahi kusema na ninaondoka? I'm almost getting my second win. I want to explain to you. I know people that are royal. Ningependa kuwaelezea. Najua watu wa kifalme. I've never seen a royal person. Sijawahi kuona mtu wa kifalme walk like this. Akitembea hivi. Their head is never down. Kichwa chao hakiangalii chini. They walk like lions. Wanatembea kama simba. Because they know wherever they are. Kwa sababu wanajua mahali popote walipo. There are forces that protects the royalty in them. Kuna nguvu ambazo zinapingana na ile ufalme iko ndani yao. Amen. Amen. Even though it can be a jungle. Kunaweza kuwa ni kwa vichaka. Have you ever heard the rap song? Umewahi kusikia wimbo? It's like a jungle sometime. It make me wonder how I keep from going under. Inakaa kama vichaka wakati mwingine hata ninashangaa niaje sijaenda chini. Who heard that? It's an old song. I'm showing my age. Ni wimbo ni wimbo wa zamani sana. Even if it's a jungle around you. Hata kama ni kichaka vichaka kinakuzingira. And there's people and things that are wild. Na kuna vitu ambavyo vinajaribu kupigana na wewe. God still has the lion of Judah with you. Yesu ba Mungu bado ako na yule simba wa Yuda ndani yako. Hallelujah. Amen. So raise up your hands. I want to give you an impartation and never forget this for the rest of your life. Kwa hivyo inua mkono nikupenda kukuombea. Raise up your hands. Inua mikono. And remember these words I'm going to speak into your spirit. Nakumbuka maneno haya nitanena kwa roho yako. 
From this day forth, Kwanzia leo, you will never lose your identity. Hautapoteza utambulishi wako. You are royal people. Wewe ni wakifalme. You are the chosen of God. Mumechaguliwa na Mungu. And you will move in the character of his being. Na mtaenenda kwa tabia zake. You will no longer look at other people. Hautaangalia wengine and determine if you're blessed or not. Na uanze kufikiria wewe si bora. You are blessed. Wewe umebarikiwa. From this day forward. Kuanzia leo. You will never take a back seat to anybody. Hautakaa kiti cha nyuma. You are blessed. Umebarikiwa. And you will no longer ask God to be bigger. Na hautamuuliza Mungu ukue mkuu. You will ask God. Utauliza Mungu, make me better. Nifanye bora. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. Give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.